was. That was, who can satisfy my soul like you and bless their assurance? And sorry for that a little loud. No, that's don't ever apologize God. for that. That's God speaking, and I appreciate that. That was beautiful. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, you know, when I was praying this, when I was looking, I looked up at <laughs> my sermons on Trust Me, I'm Trying. Y'all seen that? I, I looked up here uh, where I turned this. Let me just read to you what I just read as I was looking right here. This is Proverbs 25. It says, Like a bad tooth or a lame foot is trust in a faithless person in a time of trouble. Huh. Like a bad tooth or a lame foot or an arm that won't work <laughs> in a faithless person. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you this morning? Wonderfully blessed. We are. Remind yourself of that every day. Life gets tough, doesn't it? Life, and we don't always get the answers that we're looking for. <coughs> Trust me, I'm trying. I really am. That, you saw the sermon title. Trust me, I'm trying. I know y'all said this. You told me you shared with me this morning. Your mama said, you're trying. <laughs> My patience. We're trying, aren't we? We're trying. I'm going to be reading this morning from John chapter 5. It's a story that I've shared with you before, but you know it. and It means the world to me. John chapter 5, starting with verse 1. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Wow. Have you ever felt that way? As you're trying to get things back on track, as you're trying to get things worked out, that no matter what you do, somebody's always ahead of you. And it never works out, you think in your mind. Trust me. Trying. I know we've all said that. I'm trying. I'm trying to get this thing right. I'm trying to be the best dad I can be. I'm trying to be the best husband I can be. I'm trying to be the best pastor I can be. I'm trying to just make it through my day. Trust me. I'm trying. And I know you are too. But I don't always get it right. Now, do you always get it right? No, I just want to speak to y'all perfect people if I, I needed to meet with somebody after church to pray about your lying. Um, <laughs> we don't always get it right. The question I think I need to ask this morning is, are you trying too hard? Because you can do that. You can try too hard to do something, and your trying gets in the way. Because you're spending all of your energy trying. Sometimes what you're trying to do is not the right thing. You say, I like people who give it their best effort. I, I, you know, when I watch a ball game on television, and sometimes it, you see that athlete that you know is not the tallest, not the strongest, not the fastest, but he's out there every single play doing the best that he can. And try. That's the kind of person we root for, isn't it? Somebody that you know, not the person that always scores and, and, and spikes the ball and says, look at me, look at me, but that one that no matter what comes at them, they don't give up. I, 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 this just came to mind as I was saying that. y'all. I'm fixing to age myself here, but y'all, I'm in good company. Um, do y'all know Audie Murphy? Y'all remember Audie Murphy? Yep. Some of y'all, do y'all know Audie Murphy? Say, it's okay if you say no, because you're younger than me. <laughs> Audie Murphy, World War II hero. World War II hero that was in a position that he should have given up. Y'all need to look it Wait, up afterwards. I, yes. Movie? The, yes, there I is a, it, there's yeah. a movie about his life. Yes, that's, that's and he starred in it, actually. Yes, okay. um, but Audie Murphy did not give up when everything looked like it was against him. Do we? When less that, <laughs> there's lesser things that have come after me that I've backed off and said, no, can't do it. I just can't do it. I can't make it any further. I can't go any further in this race. I'm, I'm not feeling it today, God. But I can tell y'all, every Sunday, I might not get the sermon right, but guys, I'm trying. And sometimes I try and get in God's way. I know that. I know that. Sometimes we get frustrated because we're giving something our best effort but it might just be something that we're trying at that is far beyond our ability. You know, we might have taken on something that was bigger than us, and, and that frustrates us. 
We don't like to admit that things are beyond our ability. Though. I, you know, if somebody asks me to do something, I'm not going to say, no, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to try. I will try. I'm going to try. But sometimes we don't try. We look at the situation and we say, guys, that's above my pay grade, as some of us say. And we don't even want to continue. You really have to be able to trust Jesus to follow him, don't you think? Do you think how, how much do you think the disciples had to trust Jesus? Because Jesus was always getting in trouble. Jesus was always, as they like to say, stirring the pot. And then he would have to come back and explain to them why he did what he did. And he would do a good job of it. They weren't always listening. But he tried to explain to them why things turned out the way they did. But it took a lot of trust. To just keep going down the path even when things didn't turn out, when the food was low, when the, I'm sure the temperature was hot and they were tired. To trust Jesus when he said, come on guys, let's go. Follow me. Follow me. Let's go back to the beginning of this story. And it says this. I'm just going to go back to, to um, John 5. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, there was a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. You see, Jesus and his disciples, when they walked into that situation, they were surrounded by people with disabilities. Do you ever feel like you're surrounded by a lot of people? I'm surrounded this morning by a lot of people with disabilities. That's just the way it is. Our life, we are all disabled in some form or fashion, aren't we? It may be our spirit, it may be our mind, it may be our physical, um, something physical about us, but we all have disabilities. And Jesus and his disciples, they didn't have to go in. They did because they had to follow Jesus. But they didn't have to go in the middle of that. They could have walked around. But Jesus chose to take his disciples in the middle of that place. Surrounded by other people that were dis disabled. Different disabilities brought challenges. The blind, when they were sitting by the pool, the blind, they could feel the water. And, and feel when it stirred and knew that it was time to get in. They could feel it. But the paralyzed, the ones that were the quadriplegics or the, maybe the ones that just their bodies didn't work, they were all dependent on somebody else because it would take somebody else's effort to get them in the pool to be healed. They were at the mercy of others. Do you ever feel like everything about you, you're at the mercy of others? I get there too. There's a chance that somebody's going to pull you back. Just before you get into the pool to receive your healing, there's always that chance that just before you, you realize the victory that somebody's going to say, not your time. <laughs> I'm going to pull you back. I know y'all have all worked in situations like that when you just felt like everybody was sabotaging you. We get that way, don't we? That's the way it is with our life. And Jesus was always looking for someone. Jesus, I think he spent his life, his entire life, looking for people that were disadvantaged. He sought them out. And he waded right into the middle of that. At this time, the belief was, you know, when they used to believe that if you had a disability, if there was something wrong with you, it's because you did something bad. Well, guys, if that were the case, none of us would be able to leave our house in the morning, would it? Because we've all done something bad. And if we were paid back according to what we had done, we'd be in bad shape. We wouldn't move very far, would we? It's not tied there. Saying one who was there, who had been an invalid for 38 years, when he saw Jesus, when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him. He asked him what? He asked him his story. He asked him to tell him, what's your story? Tell me what's happened over the last... 38 years. He asked him, but what does it mean that Jesus would stop along his journey to reach out to one? I'm sure he was going to have a, a conference, you know, have a, a lot of people that were going to be around him, but he took time out of that to go and talk to one man. He sought that one person. 
That one person who was struggling, that man had gotten, after 38 years, do you think that he might have gotten used to his condition? You think he probably would have? 38 years of the same thing happening, he probably got used to the position that he was in. That he had lost all of his hope for anything to change, but he kept going, just in case. But his hope wasn't high. He didn't, I don't think after 38 years he was going, today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. Because after a while, you get frustrated. I think that's like being a Falcons fan, isn't it? Hey, this is the year. And this is, if they could just stop in the third quarter, we'd be okay. Today's the day. The man had gotten used to it. And I think we get used to our own condition too. And we stop feeling like today is the day. Today is a day, but it's just like every other day. Things are going to go bad, right? That's the way we convince ourselves. And when we get to heaven, you know, we, we might just be surprised at who we find in heaven. I, I think we're probably going to be surprised. When we get there and look around and say, how did they get here? How did they get here? Or where is so-and-so? We're going to be surprised because we don't control that. We don't control who gets there. Do you think that this man that I just told you all about after 30, 38 years, do you think he was tired of trying? I think so. I, I know I would be. 38 years of trying to do something and it falling apart. Let me ask you a question. Are you tired of trying? Are you tired of trying to fix that relationship that's been on the rocks for 20, 30 years with somebody? Are you tired of trying to let go of that bad habit that you've had for so long that just doesn't seem to go away? It keeps raising its ugly head. Are you just tired of trying? We all get there. There was a time that you tried to get people to help you into the pool, but now you found out that, hey guys, there's nobody here that's willing to help you. You finally realize that. There's nobody here to help you in. It's useless to even keep trying. And that's what we convince ourselves. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, how many of you have been struggling for a long time with something? How many of you have been struggling to let go of something that God is trying to deal with? It could be a family issue. It could be a health issue. It could be something that's just in your mind. But you're trying for a long time. He asked this is, you know, I always find humor in the way Jesus does some things. He asked this man, do you want to get well? Really? Jesus, come on. You know I've been sick for 38 years and I'm showing up here at this pool to, to get better. And you're going to ask me, do you want to get well? And I think tone is everything. I don't think Jesus texted that to him. <laughs> because if you texted that message, do you want to get well? You're going to read it differently depending on what kind of mood you're in. Do you even want to get well? Do you want to get well? I mean, it's all in your tone. Hey, do you want to get well? It's all in the tone. But we listen and that's how we deal with God. We hear His tone so differently based on what we want to hear or expect to hear. Not want to hear, but expect to hear. Do you want to get well? Are you even trying the man's probably suspicious of Jesus too because throughout the years there have been people that have come to him and said, hey, we got, we got something that will fix that problem. All you got to do is do this. And he was probably suspicious of this man that just waded right in there to him and starts talking to him and says, hey, do you want to get well? There's probably people that have walked up to him before and said, hey, I've got this special tonic. You just take it. Or you just do this thing or stop doing this and got healing answers to all the problems. These are hustlers. Hey man, I'll help you. I promise. <laughs> How many times have we heard that? Promise. I'll help you. And then they disappear once they have what they wanted and what they came for. Kind of like being asked, do you want to lose weight? I mean, do you want to lose weight? Do you want to feel better? Let me ask this question. Do you want to have a good night's sleep? If I ask you that question, do you just want to have one good night's sleep? Do you want to stop waking up at that 3 a.m. time in the morning with me and have, three, have you know, those thoughts running through your head? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to get rid of that depression? Do you want to get rid of that habit? Do you want things to be right with your family? Do you want things to just feel good again? Do you want it? He's 
asking us that each and every day. Have you ever heard if you stop complaining, if you stop complaining that things would just change for you? You would just stop complaining. Think, that's not always true, though. God doesn't get tired of you coming to Him and saying, hey, I'm hurting. I feel like I'm taking up too much of God's time so often. that I get to that place where I know it's me again, God. I know you're used to me showing up with this same thing. I need, I need, I need. But God, I need. I need comfort. I need peace. I need joy. But you can't fix a symptom and not address the root of the problem. You know, with all the stuff going on with me, I could take medication that would probably alleviate some of the issues that I'm having, but that it would, it would never go away. It would never go away. It would stop hurting maybe for a while, but it would still be there. And, and hopefully the doctor's going to be able to get to the root of the problem and, and fix it. But sometimes we don't like for God to get to the root of our problem. And what we do is we hold on to it. And that problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we hold on to it so long that we finally just explode. I know y'all have probably never done that. But I've let things build up in me to the point where I explode sometimes. I don't like me when I explode because it's selfishness. It's me just wanting to get back at somebody or just make somebody go away. That's the root of my problem. Guys, do you want to get well? You probably want to look up here and say, yeah, Todd, I'm trying. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying and we all are. You see, Jesus has never taunted anybody into salvation. He's never taunted them. Like, I don't know, you know, playing football when I was younger. Sometimes the coaches got mean um, when they were trying to get you to, don't you give up. Hilton, what are you doing? Quit. We got to go 10 more heels, you know? What are you doing? Quit taunting me. Jesus did not taunt anybody into following him. Peter, hey, you know, if you don't follow me, you're not going to get good stuff. <laughs> he didn't do that. And that's not the way he does us either. When he says, follow me, follow me. Why did he ask the man before he helped him? Why did he ask the man? Why didn't he just go in there and say, poof, you're healed. Get up, walk. He could have done that. He asked him a question. But see, before Jesus could help the man walk, he had to help the man want. He had to help the man to want to get well because in his mind he had already given up. He'd already given up his hope. And see, God's dealing with all of our desires of our heart too. The things that we ask for, the things that we want. And you've been disappointed over and over and over again. I know it. And every time that you try, you always come up just about that short. Yeah, that's the way I feel sometimes. I keep trying, but I, I almost get there. I always fall back into my old habits or fall back into my old condition always coming up short and I'm tired of that are you I'm tired of coming up short our problems seem to be on a cycle <laughs> you know you get through the problem and here it comes again you get rid of a problem here it comes again like clockwork it doesn't go away and that's because we hold on to those things and let me just tell you though when you surround yourself with sick folks when you surround yourself with people that are just as lost as you are all the time, you're going to have a new look on life. You know, sometimes we surround ourselves, and, uh, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but sometimes don't you go and put yourself, don't you go to Walmart and feel better about yourself sometimes? You're just looking around at the other people that are shopping. <laughs> You go, I mean, you always got that, and I'm probably going to hurt some feelings growing up too, but you always got that one ugly friend to make you feel better. You know, you want to condition yourself. But we surround ourselves with sick people all the time. And then wonder why we feel sick. Because everybody else is in the same boat as you. And they feel lost. And it feels good sometimes when you... You find somebody that just understands what you're going through. And they're like, yeah, I, I understand. I, I'm sad too. Let's be sad together. Being sad together doesn't get you unsad, guys. It doesn't. But you just, I think that feeling of familiarity of I'm not in this by myself. I'm not the only one feeling this. Uh, 
that, that makes us feel better for about that long, but it doesn't get rid of the sadness. Some of us have tried and tried, and we get blocked, we get pulled back every single time. We try to get in that pool to get healed, and then we get pulled back. And then when you stop, when you stop, and people see you stop because people look at you and they know when you stop, you know what they get in their mind? You just don't care anymore. You don't care anymore. We've said that about people. We've said that about ourselves. When we stop trying to better ourselves, and it's not because we don't want to be better, but it's because we're tired. And people look at us and say, you just don't care anymore. And what I want to say sometimes is, I cared, but nobody cared back. I cared. But nobody was there to help me. Nobody had my back. Everybody left me. I tried so hard and I still didn't make it. Nobody cared. And it's hard when your expectations have been damaged by disappointment. And it's not a, an immediate damage. It's a slow damage over time. It's kind of like when our bodies wear down. You know, It's over time. Sometimes it's with an injury. But sometimes we have things that we're dealing with that have happened over a long period of time and have just snuck its way into our life. I tried. I tried. I tried and it just wasn't my time. <laughs> we tell ourselves that. It's just my, not my time to get better. This man is probably tired of trying and I know we are too. Jesus did this on the Sabbath, a day of rest. Jesus did this very act, and he's calling, I think what Jesus is actually doing, he's calling BS. Broken system. <laughs> what y'all thinking? Y'all's terrible mind. <laughs> Broken system is what I was saying. Broken system. Jesus was coming in to flip the system on its head, wasn't he? He was. He was calling it broken. You know, if, if I were to ask y'all to read that scripture in there, if you notice anything, notice anything odd about um, John chapter 5? As you were reading, verse 4 is missing. There it is. It goes 1, 2, 3, 5. You know, they added that verse back later. It's at the bottom of the page. They've got it in other Bibles. They've got it there. And, and what it is, is it's a verse to explain what happens. It says they were there because the angel would come down and stir the water. And then when the water stirred, they who the first one in got to win. They put that in there to explain it away. Sometimes we insert verses in our story to explain things, don't we? They weren't there. They weren't part of our story. But we include verse 4 in our life to explain the situation. Well, you know, this is why it is why it is. Here's my verse 4. What would your verse 4 be if it was to explain your situation? Well, let me just tell you how I got to this place. <laughs> See, we add verses when things don't make sense. And in our life, when things don't make sense, we add stuff. We try to explain it. We try to explain why we're not dealing with our issues. Well, you know, it's just, just if other people would act right, I'd be better. And we try to explain it the way of how, why things are bad. There are some things that just don't belong in our story, though. There are some things that just don't belong to be a part of what we're telling the world about who God is in our life. You see, this man has been telling himself the same story for 38 years. He's telling himself the same story for 38 years. Nobody will help me. Everybody's out to get me. Every time I try, I fail. And then here comes Jesus waiting right into the middle of that story that he's told himself. And I don't think he was ready for what was about to happen. And that's the way it is in our life. We tell God the same old story and we tell people around us the same old story. We're trying. I've been this bad for so long. Nobody's helped me. Everybody's out to get me. And then here comes Jesus in the middle of that broken system. In the middle of our bad story, he's inserted verses that even that aren't even there really trying to explain who we are and why we are. Because when we get in situations like that, sometimes we think our suffering is normal. You know, that our last year, if we look at it, it's, you know, it just kind of flew by, didn't it? 2020, do y'all even remember much about it? I mean, of, of life? I mean, we know how, what went on, but it was just kind of a blur, wasn't it? Because it was our normal. And we've allowed it to be 
our normal. And we've just gotten used to it. I think we've gotten used to losing people. We've gotten used to being apart. Guys, I hadn't gotten used to not hugging folks. I miss everybody. I miss that connection. And, and I've lost a lot of people. I've lost a lot of people who have left this earth that I didn't get a chance to hug. That I didn't get a chance to love them. I've lost a lot. And I know you have too. And here comes Jesus. Here comes Jesus. You see, our religion is a broken system. But he wants to deal with us one-on-one. One-on-one. -on -one. And, and we look at him and we say, trust me, I'm trying. If you knew how hard I was trying, God, you'd be easier on me. God knows how hard we're trying. God knows everything about what we're doing and He knows our motives. I don't have any help. That's what He wanted to say. The he probably looked up at Jesus and said, I don't have any help. And, and Jesus said, uh, that was true about five minutes ago. <laughs> that was true before I came into your story. You didn't have any help here. But I'm somebody. And I'm in your story now is what Jesus was saying. I'm here now. Here I am. I'm someone. Now let me help you. Has Jesus ever walked into your story and yet all you could do was complain to him, nobody's here to help me, while Jesus is standing right there going, guys, I've been here all along. Why don't you let me help you? You know, we're, we're too busy in all the, the situations of our life and, and, and trying to get sympathy, I guess, um, to hear what God is trying to say to our hearts. Through Jesus, He's saying, I, I, my grace is all that you need. My grace is everything that you need. I'm trying. Trust me. I'm trying. What used to be true isn't true anymore is what Jesus is saying. What used to be true is not true anymore. You guys, are you still stuck? Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you seeking something to, to just give you, like I said last week, to give your joy back? And Jesus is standing right there and says, hey, guys, you're hanging. Trust me. I'm trying. We keep trying to live off of our old story. Of nobody's here to help me. Here I am. Here I am. I haven't gone over time, have I, guys? Still good? Good. Uh, I'll just keep talking. I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, I, I've got to share a story with you. I've shared this years before, but I, I, it was something that means the world to me. It, there was a, a man who had gotten weak, an older gentleman who lived out in the woods all by himself in a log cabin, and he had gotten pretty weak. And he went to God and said, God, I just want to be better. I, I just want to be better. And God says, okay, this is what he told him in the dream. He said, okay, go outside. And there's a rock out there, a big boulder out there. I want you to go out there and push that stone every single day. And the guy said, Whew, okay, that's good. Let me do that. So he'd get up early in the morning. He'd go out there, push that stone. And then he'd take a break for lunch. And he'd go back out after lunch and he'd push that stone. And then the next day, he'd get out there and do it again. And he'd get out there and do it again. And about eight months later, the man goes out and says, I, what's going on here? I think, let me measure. So he went and got his measuring tape. And he went out and measured how far that stone was from his house. And he, what, you know what he found out? That stone was in the same place it was eight months ago as when he started. And he started feeling bad. And he went and sat down on the porch. And Jesus came and sat beside him. And the man starts complaining to Jesus and says, Jesus, I thought I knew what it was going to take to get my feeble body back, you know, back. And you told me to, to go push this stone. And I've measured God. And I, I've done this and I've gone and I've measured. And the stone has not moved. And he said, my child, I didn't tell you to move the stone. I told you to push the stone. Now go look in the mirror. And when he went and looked in the mirror, the man saw a muscular body and he thought back, hey, I've been sleeping better. 
I have been, I have been feeling better about my I hadn't had those headaches. I can actually do things I didn't think I could do anymore. And he saw a different person than he understood. And I think that's the message that we get mixed up on. Sometimes we mishear God and he's, we think He's saying, go move that. And He's saying, no, just keep trying. Let me change you. Let me change you by your pushing because you might not ever move that stone. But that's not what God is calling you to do. Just keep trying. Keep pushing that stone. The man said, I'm trying. And Jesus said, trust me. Now pick up your mat and walk. Pick up your mat and walk. And trust me. I'm trying, God. I'm trying to trust you. That's what grace is all about. And Jesus is trying to flip the system on its head. But like I said earlier in my sermon, sometimes my trying gets in the way of my trusting. Because I trust my own abilities and I always let myself down because I know I don't have that ability to do that. I know you've been trying, Todd, but do you trust me? Do you trust me to be there for you? And ultimately what happened was, and he had to convince the man of this that was by the pool, I know you can't get to the water, so I'm going to bring the water. To you. <laughs> now I think that's the message we all need to hear today. I know you can't get to where you think you need to be without me. So let me come to you. Let me come into your life. Let me, let me speak to your heart and listen to me and trust me. Trust me. Heal our hearts. Heal our minds. And sometimes... I think what we need to do is we need to shock our system back in, you know, those of y'all that have pools, you know, when you have a pool that's been over the winters, just grown all kinds of algae, sometimes when you, before you go swimming, you got to shock it, don't you? <coughs> you got to shock it. That means you got to put a shock. Sometimes we need a shock in our system. Some, I think that's what church is supposed to be. Church on Sunday mornings is supposed to be a shock for our system. To, to get those things out of us. But the problem is we go outside and we start picking up all the algae we can pick up and put back in our pool. I'll, I'll shock it next Sunday. I'll shock it. We'll get better next Sunday. But God is saying, trust me today. Trust me tomorrow. Trust me with everything you have. Trust me. I'm trying. And this morning I want to ask you all to let, let Christ bring the water to you. Stop trying so hard to get in the pool when God is saying, here I am. I have everything that you need. Everything that you need. God's looking down and says, Todd, I'm trying. Let me in. And trust me. There's grace that is greater than all our sins. There's grace that is bigger than anything else in our life. God's grace. You can't earn it. And you can't try hard enough to get it. But it's here. If you want. Amen? Amen. Amen. Alright. Turn in your hymnals please. To page 365. Grace that is greater than all our sins. Join me in singing. 365. Please stand.
today when we leave and you feel like you're shaking your head saying, trust me, God, I'm trying. Hear His words. Stop trying so hard and trust me. May God watch over us as we leave this place today. May He guide everything that we do. May He forgive us our failings and may He strengthen our weakness. May He give us that peace and joy that we so long for. Jesus, walk with us this week. Guide our steps and guard our hearts until we come back together again. In Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> five, five people telling me you love them and y'all go do something good.